to a lenses series on linear algebra. In the previous lecture, we have introduced the concept of linear independent and dependent vectors. In this lecture, we are going to prove a result on that linear independence and dependence and we will work out few more problems on it. Let us get into the lecture. Here, we are going to prove, suppose S is a collection of linear independent vectors of a vector space, then every element in the linear span has a unique representation. That is what we are going to prove. Okay. Uh, let SV V1, V2 till Vn. Okay. Since it is given to be a collection of independent vectors, I have assumed this to be my S. Okay. All these entries are linearly independent vectors. Okay. Then L of S is going to prove what? L of S is going to be alpha 1 V1 plus alpha 2 V2 and it goes till alpha n Vn where all these alphas are taken from F. Right? Now I have to prove this is a unique representation. All those elements are unique in it. Suppose let me take alpha 1 V1 plus alpha 2 V2 and it goes till alpha n Vn is same as that of uh, what? lambda 1 v1 plus lambda 2 v2 and it goes till lambda n vn. I am taking in this form. Okay. Bring this to this side. Okay. Which means here I am not actually bringing this to this side. Uh, I am making the operations in the vector space. Now you may this add, just by seeing you will know that this is a linear combination of vectors. Right. A linear combination of vectors results in a single vector. Supposing if I take the entire thing to be uh, just for uh, understanding purpose, uh, let me take this entire vector to be what u1 okay, and this to be u2. Okay. So, what I actually hear is what I actually have here is u1 is a method of u2. I know uh, the vector V is uh, the vector space V is a uh, abelian group under vector addition, right? Using that idea, what I am going to do, I can identify a inverse for this U2, which means uh, the inverse let me denote it by minus U2. So I am just operating this with this on both sides. So when I operate U2 with the additive inverse I will get 0 vector. So u1 minus u2 is going to be 0 vector. Right? So this is the idea that I am making. Here uh, let me explain the same scenario for this thing. Uh, we have alpha plus beta times of v is alpha v plus beta v. It is one of the property in vector spaces. Right? So distributivity is uh, there for scalar addition as well as vector addition. So, what if I take V as minus gamma? Because all these entries are from F. It is just a notation, right? So, even if I have alpha minus gamma times of V, it is alpha, alpha V minus gamma V, right? So, these ideas we are going to use here. Okay. So, the entire right hand side part is a single vector. I am operating the inverse of that vector to both sides. That is going to give me what? Alpha 1 V1 plus alpha 2 V2 and it goes on till alpha n Vn minus lambda 1 V1 plus lambda 2 V2 and it goes till lambda n Vn. Don't think that we have just brought this to the side. We are operating the inverse of this vector to both sides. So in right hand side you are going to get zero vector. Okay. Now you can make use of the distributivity and bring your alpha 1 minus lambda 1 times of v1 plus alpha 2 minus lambda 2 v2 and this n uh, alpha n minus lambda n s times v n is 0. So this is you are having right. Okay. Now we here only we are going to make use of the fact that these vectors are linearly independent. If 
the given vectors are linearly independent what will we get we will get that whenever we have a linear combination is zero this implies all the scalars are zero right so in this case you are going to get alpha i is same as that of lambda i for one less than i less than n so this proves what this proves the uniqueness okay let us now see an example of uh, checking linear dependence and independence uh, in a different sense okay here in v of f we are given three linearly independent vectors so here what is the set v of f that is what is the vector space we don't know we know that v is some vector space in that vector space we are given with the linearly independent set of vectors okay and with this we have to examine the linear independency of the following sets in the previous examples that we have seen we were known the things that what set it is what is the elements in it what is the operation that is this scalar multiplication and vector addition that is taking place in those sets here we don't know anything we know that v is a vector space and these three are linearly independent vectors if these three are linearly independent vectors what is the thing that we have we have that, that the linear combination is zero implies the scalars are zero that is the only idea that we have with that idea only we are going to check these things okay let us take the first one okay in order to check the linear independency what do we do we will take the linear combination right take the linear combination and do the operations then you will have alpha plus beta plus gamma times of u plus beta plus gamma times of v plus gamma times of w which is zero so this is what we are taking we are actually taking this to be zero this is nothing but this value and this is zero okay using the linear independence of u v and w what you will actually what you will get alpha plus beta plus gamma is zero beta plus gamma is zero and gamma is zero so when you put it in a matrix form you will have 1 1 1 0 1 1 0 0 1 alpha beta gamma is 0 0 0 right so let me take this matrix to be a here the, what is the rank of the matrix you can see that the rank of the matrix is 3 right so when you have the rank of the matrix you see this system has a unique solution and this is unique solution is going to be the trivial solution therefore this is a linearly independent set of vectors okay now let us move to the uh, second problem there what is given it is we will have to take alpha of u minus v plus beta of uh, v minus w plus gamma of w minus u okay this is u and we have to take this to be 0 for checking linear independence now what is u this is alpha minus gamma times of u plus beta minus alpha times of v plus gamma minus beta times of w plus 0 and when you put it in a map okay this gives you alpha minus gamma is 0 beta minus alpha is 0 gamma minus beta is 0 since we are given that uv are uvw are linearly independent okay this is the case so when you put that in a matrix form we must have these things right and this is going to be the matrix a okay it is 1 minus 1 here right and this gives you 1 minus 1 here and this gives you 1 minus 1 here okay now let us try and find the rank of a so the equivalent form must going to be a uh, when i do the addition of first and two rows i will get 0 here 1 here minus 1 here it is 0 minus 1 1 now you can see that 
second and third row are equivalent which means your determinant of a is going to be zero which tells you your rank of matrix is not same as that of the number of unknowns this means what you will not have a unique solution when you will not have a unique solution this is not going to be linearly independent okay let us get into the third problem that uh, okay alpha times of 2u plus beta times of 3u plus 2v plus gamma times of 5u plus 7v plus 9w which is 0 okay if you see it is 2 alpha plus 3 beta plus 5 gamma times of u plus 2 beta uh, 7 gamma times of v plus 9 gamma times of w is 0 and this is going to give you what it is going to give you 2 alpha plus 3 beta plus 5 gamma as 0 and 2 beta plus 7 gamma as 0 and 9 gamma as 0 when you put that in the matrix form you will have 2 3 5 0 2 7 and 0 0 9 here you can see that your determinant is non-zero okay so this simplifies your rank of the matrix is 3 therefore it is linearly independent right here let us come to the fourth problem now that alpha times of u plus beta times of u plus p plus gamma times of u plus v plus w plus delta times of v plus 3w and is 0 right so it is alpha plus beta plus gamma times of u plus beta plus gamma plus 3 delta sorry, sorry delta times of v plus gamma plus 3 delta times of w is 0 and when you put that in when you are going to put that in a matrix form you are going to have sorry before that we will have to equate these things right so when i equate it i will have alpha plus beta plus gamma is 0 beta plus gamma plus delta is also 0 gamma plus 3 delta is also 0 so now putting that in a matrix form we are going to have alpha beta gamma delta for that is so it is 1 1 1 0 0 1 1 1 0 0 1 3 okay now what is the number of unknowns here it is 4 what can be the maximum rank of this matrix it is 3 so the maximum rank is never going to be equal to the number of unknowns in this case in such cases we will not have this to be linearly independent okay in order to be linearly independent we must have the rank and the number of unknowns must be same here it is not happening that is why it is not linearly independent okay now let us come to the fifth one okay. here alpha times of u plus 2v plus w plus beta times of u plus v plus 2w is to be equated to 0 here you will have alpha plus beta times of u plus 2 alpha plus beta times of v plus alpha plus 2 beta times of w is 0 and this is going to give you alpha plus beta is 0 2 alpha plus beta is 0 alpha plus 2 beta is 0 and when you put that in a matrix form you will have 1 1 2 1 right and what 1 2 is to be multiplied with alpha beta and it is going to be equated to 0 0 ok here also you can see that the maximum rank of this matrix can be 2 right do are we getting 2 uh, here you can check uh, let me take uh, this part of the matrix so I, I have to take the square matrix right and the determinant of this part let me name that as a1 so the determinant is going to be 1 minus 2 which is minus 1 which is non zero which implies my rank of the matrix is 2 and I have the number of unknowns is also 2 so I am getting the number of unknowns and the rank as same therefore it is 
linearly independent right so hope you have had uh, some idea of finding linearly independent and dependence of vectors using the matrix ideas uh, even if the vector space is not specified just because just by having the idea that the given set of vectors are linearly independent we can check the linearly independence of the uh, collection of vectors formed with the help of those linearly independent vectors okay in the theorem that we have seen in this lecture uh, let us try and examine the converse of that thing okay not the converse a result a problem based on that theorem uh, let me take my s to be uh, 1 1 0 and uh, 2 2 0 and uh, 1 0 1 okay if you check this is the uh, what mm -hmm. this is linearly dependent set okay so let me try to find out some value in l of s and i can give i can show you that i can give two different ways of expressing it a uh, more than one way of expressing it okay so generally let me take uh, 1 1 0 2 times of 1 1 0 plus 3 times of 2 2 0 plus 1 times of 1 0 1 okay and it is going to be 2 2 0 plus 6 6 0 plus 1 0 1 so this is 8 sorry, 9 8 1 this is in L of S. Okay. So this is in L of S. Here we have examined one element of L of S. Here the scalars that we have chosen are 2, 3 and 1. Okay. Let me choose alpha to be 4 and beta to be 1. Sorry, beta to be 2. And let me remind, let me have gamma to be 1. Then also I will have two times of 2 to 0 plus 1 times of 1 0 1 in this case also you are going to get this thing ok so when you have the set as linearly dependent set you do not have a unique representation for any element in L of S ok it is not necessary that all the elements all the elements in the linear span must have several forms at least one element have several form in the sense we cannot generalize right suppose uh, let us take this to be our s okay i am taking this to be my s and try to find out the l of s l of s is going to consist of this form elements of this form right where I, uh, alpha and beta are in this case uh, let me consider my b of f to be r3 of r ok it is going to be what it is alpha alpha 0 plus beta 0 beta therefore it is alpha plus beta comma alpha comma beta right so this is the linear span but in the previous case what was the linear span it is alpha 1 1 0 plus beta 2 2 0 plus gamma 1 0 1 right so it is uh, alpha comma alpha comma 0 plus 2 beta comma 2 beta comma 0 plus gamma comma 0 comma gamma right so now let me combine these two things first it is going to be alpha plus 2 beta, alpha plus 2 beta plus 0, comma, gamma, comma, 0, comma, gamma. You can see that whenever alpha and beta are real values, this is going to be some real value. Similarly, this is going to be some real value. Right? So, let me take this real value to be some delta. Delta, delta 0 plus gamma, 0, gamma. So, now I have delta plus gamma and this is delta and this is gamma. Right? Here, I uh, whatever may be the values I choose, alpha I choose something and beta I choose something. 
suppose alpha is 2 and beta is 1 ok I will get alpha plus 2 beta to be 4 do I have any other possibilities of bringing this 4 if I choose uh, alpha to be 0 and beta to be 2 I will get it right so there are several possibilities of getting this value ok here I cannot do so the alpha is taking separately and beta is taking part separately this is taking part separately uh, supposing I have uh, 2 5 then I have 7 ok uh, let me take uh, another value too you can bring these relations right but here you have several possibilities here I have only one possibility that is what we have proved in the theorem so I have given the example of what we have seen in the theorem as well and uh, why that result is not true for the linearly independent set also I have proved with the help of an example if you have any queries in this lecture you can post it in the comment section that will be clarified within 24 hours of time thank you for watching